are you Bowen? It is Sunday and we are at Barberine Beach and today our topic is forest medicine and Ayurveda and we have a reason for this forest medicine business because last year Dr. Pushpa and I were invited by the Association of Nature and Forest Medicine to attend a symposium and a seminar on forest medicine. The organizers were particularly keen to invite Dr. Pushpa because they thought that she could train as a forest medicine doctor. So I discussed with, with Dr. Pushpa and I knew that the forest was very important for Ayurveda because the forest produces the raw material that we need to prepare the Ayurveda medicine. But I had very little understanding of how the forest could also be a source of healing, a source of medication. And so Dr. Pushpa found the research and both of us went to Japan. We followed the course, we followed the lectures, we walked in the forest, uh, we did stress tests before and after and I was surprised to find that I was stressed before my walk because I am known to declare that I never get stressed but I had to believe and accept the scientific findings and we really enjoyed it. So first Dr. Pushpa will tell us what she found when she looked into the forest as a source of healing. And this healing actually we could find from years back. Ayurveda is the science of universe discovered by ancient rishis who lived in forest and they found their, they got their uh, food from the forest and the medicine from the forest. And the forest nourished them. How they nourished, the trees give a lot of energy to them. And the, the later period of 2,600 years ago, the Gautama Buddha sat under the bow tree and attained enlightenment. We can see in all 28 Buddha attain enlightenment under the different trees. In fact, that uh, Barbarin Beach Ayurvedic Resort, we have seven trees which is mentioned in Buddhist philosophy which are helping to the Buddhas to became enlightenment and uh, even today we have the oldest recorded tree located in uh, located at Anuradhapura city in Sri Lanka it is a branch of original tree which helping to Gautama Buddha to have this this uh, enlightenment <coughs> and then uh, if we could see the 
forest medicine and ayurveda they have very close connection and that's why actually even today sri lankan temple people sat sit under the bow tree and it's give more relaxation calm and quiet feeling to them and they get quite uh, de stress feeling and so i think this is our healing system thank you dr pushpa in fact after we came back from the from our trip to japan and i go to the temple i sit under that tree with a much greater degree of understanding when you come next time we will show you that this tree the leaves are in a particular shape they all point downwards and actually when you sit under that tree you can feel the energy and the tree in anuradhapura is a very special tree because that tree is then about 2600 years old it's the first it's the first recorded tree in history and we also have a lot of virgin forests a singharaja forest and a nature parks where there are very old trees and in fact uh, mili says that next time you all come we will arrange a program where you can go and see the old forest the virgin forest and see some of the forest that babarin has as well as the medicinal herbal trail that dr pushpa and dr champika and uh, our professors of botany have worked out so now what we would like to do is to move over to japan because this forest medicine was developed in japan and it is called shinrin yoku and our engagement with the forest medicine is because of two of our guests uh, architect mr toshia ochai and his wife dr hiroko ochai dr hiroko is a surgeon as well as a scientist and she trained in forest medicine and in fact she was a lecturer at our seminars that we followed in japan and she's a wonderful warm person so hiroko we would like to cross over to japan and connect with you so you can explain to us the concept of forest medicine as well as the scientific data over to you hello i'm hiroko ochiai from tokyo japan I come to Berberin Beach every year since 2011. I love this place because it's really beautiful and comfortable and there is everything which is short in my hometown Tokyo. First of all, I thank Ms. Giza and Dr. Pushpa to give me this opportunity to make a lecture. Today's my topic is about Shinrin Yoku and forest medicine. and about myself i work at national tokyo medical center it's a general hospital having 750 beds and i'm a chief of department of plastic and reconstructive surgery of the hospital and i'm also a certified physician of forest medicine So I can say that I do operations every day at hospital and go to the forest at the weekend to release my stress. I belong to INFOM, International Society of Nature and Forest Medicine, so let me explain about the society. Dr. Michiko Imai is a president of INFOM, very famous climber in the world, and she is also a medical doctor. The International Society was established in Japan in 
Researchers have tried to find preventive effects against diseases from forests. There are 41 of domestic and 13 of international cer certificated doctors of forest medicine. I am working with my colleagues in this organization to do research and spread the results to the world. This is a side note, but let me tell about INFOM International Seminar, which was held last year in Japan. 38 participants from 14 nations joined the seminar. And you can see Ms. Giza here and Dr. Pushpa here. We had academic workshop, lectures, and on-site training. Finally, the participant received a certification of completion. Again, you can see Ms. Giza here and Dr. Pushupa here. As a result, Dr. Pushupa is the only one Ayurvedic doctor who is qualified as a certificated forest doctor in the world. After the seminar, we are trying to cooperate to increase the value of the forest. Let's get down to business. As you know, many people are already aware they feel comfortable in the forest. There are the quiet atmosphere, the beautiful scenery, the mild climate, the clean fresh air, the fighting side, etc. There are many elements of the forest that make us feel comfortable and they affect us in complex ways. By the way, have you ever heard about Shinrin Yoku? Shinrin Yoku is a health promoting method originated in Japan. It was registered a trademark in the US and became the topic in 2017. So now Shinrin Yoku became international term. Now you can find the term of Shinrin Yoku on the title of books and on a lot of internet sites. In Japan, some researchers started to investigate how the forest contributes to human body in 1992, and it has evolved into a science called forest medicine. It is a new borderless science belonging to the categories of alternative, environmental, and preventive medicine. This is the concept of forest medicine. It has been already proved that we can get the certain effects of physiological relaxation and improvement of immunity in the forest. We can say that preventive medical effects of Shinrin Yoku are demonstrated by scientific data and some studies show that there is an adjustment effect in the forest, so individual difference will be offset. It means we can recommend every people to do the Shinrin Yoku. Next, let me show you some data of the forest medicine. The first, Shinrin Yoku normalizes blood pressure. When high blood pressure people walk in the forest, their systolic and diastolic blood pressure decrease compared with walking in urban. This result is the reflection of increased parasympathetic nerve activity. So I will explain about parasympathetic nerve briefly. When we are active or be tense in daytime, the sympathetic nerve system works. On the other hand, when we are relaxed or sleep, the parasympathetic nerve system has to work. Both systems are necessary and it is important that both nerve systems act properly. However, it is said that the parasympathetic nervous system does not work well in the modern people because of chronic stress. We cannot control these nerve systems by our will, but it is proved that doing Shinrin Yoku is helpful to change the state of autonomic nerve. Next, when you walk in the forest, urinary adrenaline it's so-called stress hormone decreases. 
but walking in the city does not decrease stress even if you feel fun. This is the result of questionnaire. This figure shows that forest visits reduce the scores of negative feelings, whereas increase the score of vigor. And this is the hot topic. NK cells stands for natural killer cells. They are a part of immune system. They work against infection and tumors, including cancers. Surprisingly, Shinrin Yoku increases the activity of NK cells. And the effect lasts for one month. It means you can keep your high immune activity by visiting forests once a month. Let me wrap up the proved effects of Shinrin Yoku. Forest visits significantly normalize blood pressure and prevent metabolic syndrome. Shinrin Yoku stabilizes the activity of autonomic nerves. It also reduces stress hormones and leads people into relaxed state. Forest visits reduce the scores of negative feelings, whereas increase the score of vigor. There is a preventive effect on depression. Shinrin Yoku significantly raises the immune system so we can expect the preventive effects on cancers. Then how should we spend time in the forest? The most basic way to get the power of the forest through Shinrin Yoku is to use the five senses. By using these five senses, they will remind you what you are by nature. Human beings originally inhabited in natural environments. Please regain yourself by the power of the forest. And when you enjoy Shinrin Yoku, please remember these. Let nature enter your body through all five senses. Make a schedule according to your physical strength. Be careful not to be so tired. Don't be hurried to walk. It's not exercise. Sitting and lying are recommended. But Shinrin Yoku is only a way of preventive illness. Please go to the hospital if you really get sick. Please maintain your health by going to the forest once a month. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hiroko. You connect the philosophical part of forest medicine with the scientific data so clearly and well. And it helps us to continue with this conversation. So, Dr. Pushpa, if we focus on the philosophical part, on the nature and the healing that comes from the forest, I know that in Ayurveda, we talk about nature, nature is important, and you look, identify nature in concrete terms with Pancha Mahabhuta. So can you explain Buddha? 
So can you explain the Ayurveda linkage to nature? Five basic uh, elements named as water, fire, air, space, and earth. And these five basic elements present in one substance. And this Panchamaha Buddha consists of human. As well as the nature substance. And so that's why this Panchamaha Buddha we mention as a energy with the energy with the cosmic uh, consciousness. And this function of our Buddha we can uh, explain in a as a, an example we can explain it. We can take the water as an example and the, the solid state of water a manifestation and present here solid character in a earth And then the solid substance, that means ice, can have a fire. And this fire makes it or liquefy. And that shows water element. And then this water element get too much heat, it will be steam that shows this air element. And this air element disappears and that shows this uh, heater or space. And also I have to mention another thing. Pancha Mahabhuta, they have different kind of energies within them, particular energy. And this ether, it has this uh, nuclear energy. And air, it has electrical energy and the third one we can mention as a fire and that actually shows to us the radiant energy and water that element we can get the, or we can see that energy we call chemical energy. And then the earth element, it shows the mechanical energy. And these we can see in a one substance and this actually creates as 
dimension we go, nature as well as the human being. So that's why we can show we have the bigger connection with the nature and human being. So, I mean, we talk about Panchamahapun all the time, and what is really fascinating is that Ayurveda is so vast, and you can approach even Panchamahapun in so many directions, is it? But if you look at the basics, Panchamahapun are the five elements, and the universe is made up of these five elements. Right? And the human beings are also made up of these five elements. And today, you told me, and this is a new thing that I had not heard before, that these elements are also interconnected. And that's the example you took of water. Water, as a solidified substance, is ice. Right? When it is heated with fire, it liquefies. And then if you heat it some more, it becomes steam. And then it goes to the space and it's washburn. And it is either. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, you see, what is important is that although this is the more philosophical part of Ayurveda, it is a fundamental part because when we talk with the doctors all the time, they tend to go back to that. So, a good grasp of Panchimaha Buddha and some of the principles of Ayurveda help us to understand other details, other details of the specific medicine for specific illnesses and even this whole immunity business which everybody is interested in. I find in the internet they say do 10 things and increase your immunity. Drink water with turmeric, drink ginger. And you can find that anywhere. But the value with the conversation with the doctors is that it gives you an insight into the Ayurveda, into these philosophies. So we are hoping that by the time COVID disappears and you are ready to come again, you will come with a lot of understanding, Dr. Pushpa, of the principles of Ayurveda, isn't it? And I'm sure they will, you will all have more questions to ask the doctors more than before. So, if we move on, I would like to pick something else that uh, Dr. Hiroko mentioned. She mentioned, Dr. Pushpa, about the five senses and how the forest can stimulate the five senses. And that helps to reduce our blood pressure and stress, etc. Our blood pressure and stress, etc. Can you tell us how Ayurveda talks about the five senses? About the five senses, if you do, we have to talk about the five sensory organs. And also we can talk about five active First, I will mention this five active organs mouth, hand, feet, and genital. Even uh, at the last thing, we mentioned secretory organ. And these are helping to. I talk about the sense organ. We have five sense organs eyes, ear, 
blow, hum, and speak. And when we talk about these five sense organs, actually, ether. Ether is the medium to transport or travel the sound. And it is function as a hearing. The sense organ, sensory organs here. And if we think about the hair, it is function as a touch. And that touch, we can feel in our sensory organ, that sensory organ we mentioned as a skin. And if we think about the higher ears, and that actually function gives heat, light, and it is function as a vision and related organ is eye. And then if we talk about water element and that related to the taste. And as a sensory organ, we could recognize the tongue. Tongue cannot identify the taste without having that view. And then the last one is earth that we have seen. And it's related to the smell. The sensory organ we could get this smell, this note. And these are the connection actually because we can look about these five basic elements, water, fire, air, and earth, uh, elements, water, fire, air, and earth, uh, taste. And we can look how they function and action in the particular home. And so we can see the nature very close to us because we could find these five senses in the nature, sound, hearing. According to hearing, we could feel that sound in nature. And that's why the forest and the human, human being they have this relationship. So, what you're saying is in Ayurveda also we have the, we have reference to the five senses and then we look at, we talk about hearing and either, either, either is what allows the sound to travel, huh? sound is transferred. And so you hear it, and then I suppose you could say that the forest is important because you remember we were asked in our forest medicine walk to listen to the sounds of the rustling leaves, the wind sweeping, sweeping the leaves from the ground, and the birds calling, various kinds of sounds. And in forest medicine, what they say is that you should open your senses, be conscious of taking in these sounds. And I think that could be quite useful because I know that in the summer, most of you walk in the forest or you go hiking. 
and you could be aware of this as you walk, not so much high, but if you do a leisurely walk, you could be aware of the sounds, which according to Ayurveda, travels because of either. And then you also mentioned uh, the touch and the skin, isn't it? And we feel the touch. And in our walks, we were told to remember to feel the breeze on our face and our skin. And we were asked to touch the trees and touch the leaves. And in fact, when I came back, whenever I walk on that ramp, now I'm suddenly conscious of the trees. And Billy is always surprised why after 10 years of walking on these ramps, suddenly I'm fascinated with the trees. But so many times I've just walked without being conscious. And the barks are so beautiful. So we were told to touch. And then you mentioned the fire and that we can feel and see and hear the light and the heat and the different colors. So as we walk, we were asked to be conscious of the different colors. And you remember Dr. Kushba, we talked between us that these forests all look the same color. And our forests, even our garden, so many colors, you know, so many shades of green. And then you mentioned water. How does that work? Water and the taste. So taste comes with water. Elements, yeah. So the character. So the character of water is also to give taste. The water has the character. So the water is connected with our tongue because we can taste. Yes. We can pluck trees, pluck berries from the forest. It's not a good idea. We might pluck a poisonous berry or something. Okay. And then the last thing was the earth, no? And the sense or then you said it's the nose. How does that work? I think we just can go to the forest and we can see a different pollen and uh, also the different smells with some trees, they produce some taste and we could uh, feel this uh, different smell. And in the forest we can get this five uh, senses. And we were told to pluck a leaf and crush it and smell. Okay, so moving on, Dr. Pushpa. Now, I am weather is always talking about balance, balance and rhythm. So we we'll be first about this balance business. So Dr. Pushpa, in Ayurveda, we are always talking about balance. And we know that nature also understands how to balance. So could you tell us a little bit about the balance? You talk about balance, imbalance, everything is a balance. So, can you explain that again to us? If we talk about uh, balance and imbalance, we have to think how this balance or imbalance comes. And according to our eating pattern, living pattern, and due to our behaviors, this balance or imbalance could come. But we have to recognize what uh, what kind of energies we have uh, to make this balance or uh, imbalance and as i mentioned before we have a uh, five basic uh, elements the water fire air space and earth these five basic elements create three energies within us and these three energies we mention as a vata pitta and a kapha Vata uh, consists of predominant air and space. Pitta consists of predominant uh, fire and water. 
kapha consists of predominance water and earth and these five elements create these three energies these three energies give all these uh, biological and physiological functions in our body even in our mind and if we do something wrong we can get imbalance according to our uh, types and uh, according to our body uh, conditions if we are doing good things and it is helping to keep our balance and for example if we are uh, eating too many vata increasing food or if we are uh, doing uh, too much traveling and if we are talking too long and uh, these are he helping to increase our vata that increased vata gives uh, effect to imbalance that shows some symptoms uh, within our body we can feel it even sometimes we can feel it in our mind because sometimes when we get the stress and we cannot uh, uh, focus on one thing and uh, there will be a imbalanced feeling and how we get the balance and we have to find what substance missing or what, what substance is too much in our body and these things or if there is a uh, too much substance we have to reduce it then we have to give opposite uh, characters uh, substance and then if we have uh, reduce uh, any substance if we have a uh, reduced feeling and then we have to fill it from the environment and uh, so that's why actually if we get stress this is actually vata imbalance in situation if we go to the forest and uh, then we get these five basic elements through the forest and uh, due to the sensations and we are talking before and then uh, we can get more relaxed and calm feeling uh, through the forest and uh, that's why actually I think uh, we have to have this balance uh, through the supporting with the environment. So you had said that um, there is Vata Pitta Kappa and Pitta and Kappa can be managed by Vata? Something yes, like that you had told me earlier. So is, vata, is Pitta and Kappa kind of bad guys <laughs> and Vata is the good guy managing or how does it work? Actually we can't say one is bad or the other one is good because all are good if they are working and functioning uh, in balanced situation. If they are uh, if they become imbalanced then they can uh, be bad or uh, something give uh, more effectively to keep uh, imbalance uh, condition but uh, vata actually is the uh, main dosha it can maintain uh, pitta and I think I can explain that uh, through the uh, rhythm mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So okay let's go to the rhythm then. Okay then I will <laughs> talk about the rhythm and due to that uh, rhythm we have also three energies. We have to talk about these three energies. One uh, is Vata, the other two Pitta and the Kappa but Pitta and Kappa we compare with our sun and moon energy and uh, moon always giving the energy to us and to our planet and uh, sun always taking the energy from us and also from the planet and these two things we have to maintain or we have to balance the balancing process carry on with this vata and that's why actually the vata is the main dosha it can maintain the pitta and kapha like that way we can uh, mm -hmm. tell and in our body also the same things happen like in the uh, environment because uh, when we get too much cooling effect through the sun 
and we get so much ice in our planet. From the moon? From the moon. And uh, if we have uh, too much uh, in the moon, and uh, if we have uh, too much uh, heat, then sun takes all this water and all the energy mm -hmm. from us and also from the planet. And then it makes kind of imbalance, but this uh, water can maintain not to give too much cooling effect because uh, we know this blooming air around us around the world and it can cooling it can give cooling effect if it is too much sun we get and uh, even the same thing happens if we have a too much cool then sun gives mm -hmm. balance but these two things is balancing uh, character which uh, vata can have. So the balance is also in some way connected to the rhythm and the and the sun gives the heat and the warmth and the moon gives the coolness, coolness. cool level. So the sun and the moon also have to be balanced. I mean the the warmth of the suns. Those okay. energies also need to be balanced. So, and the same thing is happening within us yes. because uh, vata, as I mentioned, can maintain the pitta and kapha. The pitta always gives the energy to keep our temperature and it can digest the food, and uh, also uh, kapha gives more liquid substance to our body and it keeps that uh, temperature not to be too high and then they have uh, all the patho pathological and uh, pathological reactions and uh, chemical reactions what we have in our body can function well mm. and that uh, maintain through the water mm. and then we can see this uh, rhythm in the outside and rhythm in the mm. inside. So. I suppose just as you say that physically our body components are in balance, our energies are in balance and in the same way there is also the mental and emotional mm -hmm. part can also be in balance. Yes, because these three energies govern the all the biological, physiological functions in the body, even the mind mm. and that situation uh, we can have some kind of uh, mental uh, uh, disturbance. So if we have a mental disturbance, for example, if we are really angry and we feel we are disturbed, then we can make use of the nature. Yes. So then you can go and sit under a tree or sleep yeah, under then, a tree. Uh, actually, uh, if we get uh, too much anger, that means it increases our pitta. Mm -hmm. And uh, then pitta needs kind of cooling effective things. And if we go to the forest and if we lie down uh, close to the waterfall or somewhere else, which is very cooling place. Anyway, this forest is a cooling place. And that helping to uh, calm down our anger and our pitta then it makes us more relaxation. So that is why the doctors always say that uh, physiologically from the bodily functions, from the food, from the environment, all of that will help us to balance our pitta and kapha. And in the same way, our emotional balance also we need to keep and that we can get the help of nature. Yes, and even uh, for the water actually. Even for the water. Yes. And so we can get help from nature, uh, we can get help from our own tranquility meditation. There are many, many ways of trying to achieve that. And I think that it is also important to understand that Ayurveda as a philosophy was not, did not evolve in isolation. No. It evolved with yoga and Patanjali and the numerical science. 
so nature ayurveda the vedas all of this is so connected but what about the rhythm where does it really come from the rhythm actually uh, we have to think about this uh, six philosophies the mm -hmm. shaddashana we call and they explain very well how this uh, energy is creating and how this uh, uh, human being get this energy and all those things they explain very well in uh, yoga darshana mm -hmm. uh, there's a good explanation mm -hmm. but i have asked this from you many times and i think this is something that i can ask all of you also to reflect on i mean does the energy originate in the universe or does the energy originate from us so that if the energy i mean if the rhythm that we are talking about the good rhythm the tranquil rhythm the beneficial rhythm uh, rhythm is within us then it is then we are in control of it isn't it but dr pushpa will never give a straight answer <laughs> as to whether it's coming from us or whether it's coming from the universe because she'll give you a long explanation but i think this is what because i would like to leave you <laughs> with because there is a very deep uh, explanation and uh, we have to look at a few philosophies okay so with time we will all come to understand this deep philosophy and that is why we are bringing it to you in small bits but this is why we are each time we have an ayurveda session even though it may be a very practical session we want to go back to the basics isn't it the basic principles because that's where the real understanding is so we would like to leave you with the thought rhythm coming from the universe rhythm coming from us and i want to remind you that our webinar team will be with us for half an hour and if you have any questions from dr pushpa or even from dr hiroko you could ask that if you have any thoughts and ideas about the philosophies and the universe and nature you could write to us next week will be our webinar on yoga and mili is going to introduce the webinar in barbarian waves she will show you a little glimpse and to show you that you may remember you have come for years and each year she has a story about when she will finish and i think next sunday she can show you how it's done and how the garden is growing and this is a very special garden at barbarian waves because we decided we will make a little forest of medicinal trees and dr pushpa if a forest of normal trees is so beneficial we can imagine what a forest of medicinal yes. trees would be so that's a treat for the future we also want to tell you that our zoom webinars will be available in our blog after the sunday each thursday so thursday those of you who may have missed this then you can go to your go to our blog and you will see it each thursday so we hope you will keep well we thank you for coming